Welcome back, everybody. We're going to be talking about saving and loading data from the file system, specifically I and I files in this video. And more specifically, we're going to be using a DS map structure. Last video, we took a look at lists. Lists are great, but you know what? The map structure, even better for certain circumstances. So here's the general idea. When I hit play here, I've actually got a variable for apples, burgers, and pears. So when I hit R, it actually randomly gives me apples, burgers, and pears. Now when I hit save, so remember these numbers here, 258, 1382, 7. I save, and let's say I hit R a couple more times, and I say, yeah, I want to load up those values I saved to disk. It loads up the old values. So this is great for an inventory system and saving your inventory. And it's really nice, easy code. So let's take a peek at it. So let's show you the background variables that I'm working with first of all. I have this global object hidden in the background, and I've made a DS map. Now, if you're not familiar with lists and maps and grids, you should go back and check out some of our previous videos. Or if you're a genius, you can try to hang in there and uh, check out how this works. So global.inventory is our map structure. Now, the map structure, for those that don't know, it's where you actually get to name a key pair, or sorry, you get to name a key, and it points to a piece of data. So let's see how this actually works. Just to show you that when I hit the random button, that's my R key, I just randomly find values for apples, burgers, and pears, and I set the map, right? I clear it out, and I say, hey, inventory map, apples should point to the value A, burgers should point to the value B, pears should point to the value P. Okay, so these are the keys, and then these are the values. Right, the numbers that it's going to point to. This makes it easy to deal with in your game when you're naming stuff, right? Lists, sometimes you're stuck with, uh, you know, slot 0, slot 1, slot 2. The map is nice that you get to name these things. Okay, let's go pop and look at our save and load. So our save and load here, list with keys. Let's just go look how I save this stuff. So if you've already gone through some of the other I and I file videos, which is sort of important, right? It'll make this way easier. Uh, you'll notice here, first thing I do is I check to see if my map is empty or not. If it's empty, I'm not going to bother saving. I'm going to give a little error message. And then here, I do the nice command, very similar to what I did with the list uh, in our previous video. I say dsmap write global dot inventory. And what this does is you give it a DS map structure and it's going to write it into one single string. So even if you had a map with a thousand values, this thing is going to spit back one long string that represents that entire map. And that's map as string. Okay, just a variable I made up. Now, if you're curious what that ends up looking like, it ends up looking like this. Keep in mind my inventory list is very short, right? It's only apples, burgers, and pears. But that's the data that that method kicks back. Right? You can even see the commas there. So that's a big of a hint. You have a key and a value. And a key and a value and a key and a value. Now, once you have that whole map saved as a string, it's really easy to save it into an I and I file. All you have to do is open up the file. And let's write a string in there. Section inventory. The key will be items. And the data, that one big long string map as string and then when you're all done close off that file and again that's what it made right section inventory key items and the whole map saved as one string in there now let's go see how we read this and repopulate our map so this would be in load inventory anytime you want right you load the inventory with the script up and you'll see pretty short code here um, I open up my I and I file and then I try to read in that one line so try to read a string because it was a string and inventory section the key items default value and a so remember the default value is actually pretty important because if let's say this key doesn't exist it's going to be assigned na which you'll see after I close the file I can just check if map is a string is equal to NA, I know that there was no value there to read, and so I can handle that, right? No inventory to read, handle it, 
I just get out of here. Okay, you do whatever you want. And now, one line only. Put this whole map back into the map structure. DS map read. So when you DS map read, you give it a string. That's the second parameter. You, the first parameter is the map you want to put it into. And so remember, I already had a map made called global inventory. I give it the string. And false is for whether or not you want it to be compatible with uh, the older version of GameMaker. And that's a false on mine. Okay, and you can pray if you're just using Game Maker Studio, you can probably always have false there. And that's really it. All that data just got loaded from the file and slapped right back into a map structure for you. And once it's in the map structure, I'll just show you here in my draw event of my draw object. That's all I'm doing is I'm just drawing out those lines, right? DS map find value. I give it the map and I give it the key apples and that's why I like using maps sometimes right because it's just so easy just to name a map name the key and it spits back the value that's being stored at that spot right pretty good and that's basically maps and I and I files and that can be really really useful now uh, if you're not tired of these I and I videos yet I highly recommend the next one the next one's the most powerful one it's the one where I save the X, Y, and the type of objects in the room, and I basically save the entire room. So it's a great example of how you could set up uh, a file, setting up a whole level, placing objects in the room for you, right, for levels. So we'll see you in that video. Uh, have fun with this. Remember, these projects are all on the website. You can download them if you need the code. Thanks for watching.